Today I'm going to be making a traditional English curry, a recipe we served at Buckingham Palace and that dates back to Queen Victoria. Now, Queen Victoria loved curries and although she was Queen of the United Kingdom, she was also Empress of India. She even had two chefs at Buckingham Palace that just made curries for her every day to send up to the Royal Dining Room. Now, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria wasn't a big fan of corgis. She liked King Charles Spaniel. She had one called Dash. So, we have no Winston with us today. Come on, we've got to keep with the theme. While most people think the curry is Indian, it's not. It's actually a British invention. Well, I say British invention. It was invented by the Indian spice traders way back in the 18th century. And they would blend all of the different spices uh, to make the curries, the different types of Indian curries. With a mixture of spices like turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, cardamom, cumin, coriander, mustard, chili pepper, fenugreek. The spices and the flavors were incredible. But the problem was that the Brits just didn't get it. They just didn't understand that mixing of all those different flavors. To the British, back then, curry powder was curry powder. It was all curry powder. And so it was really clever of the Indian spice traders to decide to make a mix that was very, very mild, that has lots of turmeric, coriander come in, fenugreek and chili pepper. And that became the staple. That became the curry powder that we know today. And you can buy on the, the shelves ready mixed. This is a super easy curry if you've never really been into curries and you want to sort of get into the market, you know, just taste one. And it's not too spicy, it's not too strong. It's super easy to make at home. And the queen would eat curry, but very mild curries. We do coronation chicken tartlets and that could have a little of the curry in it. Uh, we do curried mutton pies, which um, the royal family would take out on shoots at Balmoral Castle. But this one, very simple, very basic, and it starts with some onion. And then some apple. The apple is going to give us the sweetness that just balances out then those spices. And the chicken I cut into bite-sized pieces. I use chicken breast in this, but if you want to use thighs, you can. Given that I'm making a traditional Victorian curry today, I thought it'd be cool to use my Victorian pans. At Buckingham Palace, they still use antique Victorian copper pans. They have VR, Victoria Regina, stamped on the side. Tin lines the pot and that protects it from the copper, which if you just cook on its own is poisonous. But copper is a great conductor of heat, so they're perfect for cooking in. And then I've got my Mason Cash bowls. Mason Cash have been making these bowls since like 1900 and they're in every Victorian home. I just love using the Mason Cash cookware. It like takes me back. It's like being at the palace. It's like being on Downton Abbey. I start off searing the chicken and put some oil into the pan and then add my chicken. And I'll do this in stages because I don't want to crowd the pan. Once I've seared the chicken, I add a little more oil to the pan. I'm not going to clean it out. I've got all those little crispy bits of chicken in there, which are going to give it some incredible flavor. 
Then I can add the onion and the apple. Some salt and just stir all that together and I stir this until it starts to soften and all those flavors come together and those chicken pieces look from the bottom lift off after a few minutes I can add the chicken back to the pan and now my curry powder This is all down to personal taste, so you can add a little or a lot. Stir that in and get it covering the chicken. Next, I'm going to add some flour. And finally, my chicken broth. I'll bring this to the boil. And once it boils, I'll turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for about 15 to 20 minutes until the chicken's tender. Given that the Indian chefs are outnumbered by the French chefs in the royal kitchens at the palace, it's not surprising to learn that the curry dish actually took on a little French influence before it got to the table. Because we're actually thickening this with flour, that's something that's not normally done in Indian cuisine. And what you end up with is a classical French velouté with curry powder in there. So um, a velouté indienne, I guess, chicken a la indienne. The flavors all come together in this and make this really thick, creamy sauce. I say creamy because just before serving, we actually add a little cream into the mixture and stir that in. It smells so good. I've cooked a little rice with that too. I've got some poppadoms for scooping up the rice and the, the curry sauce. And I've got some mango chutney. If you don't know where to get those, I've put links for those in the description below. But any good Indian store, you can get either of those. Now all we have to do is taste it. A little rice and some of this gorgeous curry and the creamy sauce some poppadum and a little mango chutney it smells so good It's so good. This is my curry, my traditional English curry. I'd love you to post your curry, your favorite, below. This is a simple, easy one to make at home. This is delicious. <coughs> oh my. Winston, what are you doing up there? Come on down. You just had to be in the video, didn't you? It's too spicy for you. You can have some rice, though. Oh, you want some cabbage? Sometimes the dogs would have a little problem with their constitution, and so there'd be some rice and cabbage to mix in with the meat. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Click on the subscription below. Leave a comment. Tell me what curry you want me to make, and tell me your favorite curry too. I'll see you again soon.